I hope everybody's having a good weekend. It's Saturday. We're going to be looking, doing our usual format. I'll play some viewers then. Uh, Spencer's going to teach us about backwards pawns from John Nunn's um, Understanding Chess Middle Games. Per usual. That's right. So I'll do what, the best I can. What were the results from the games today? Let's see. Um, In the tournament. How many people are left? Four? Well, Wesley and, and, and Magnus are oh, in, no, for, in the finals. Oh, yeah. And the other two are playing for third, yeah. Third, okay, third, yeah. It's uh, right. Rajabov and MVL. That's right. Hey, hey Scottish Demon Go. How's it going? How's Hello. it going? <laughs> How's it going? But anyways, Rajabov won, and uh, Magnus and and and, and so they they tied their match. I guess. I don't yeah. know. Did they have a tie break? I forgot. Already. Ben says that they won't have a tie break because today was the first day. All right. So they might have one tomorrow. I get it. I haven't gotten to follow it all very closely. No. Fortunately, let me see what he says. None. I wonder if I could do that. Yeah, I could do that. You should say nine. <laughs> but um, I'm just really a horse. Yeah. Mm -hmm, so I can't do a whole. Your voice does sound a little horse. Mm, definitely horse. Like a pony, a little horse. <laughs> Let me just tell him that real quick. Oh, that joke that I just said? No. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Well, because you yeah, may I may not be able to sing sing very much. Anyway, right. We got a, We got one challenge already, so I'm going to get it started, and hopefully, some more people are going to show up. Hey, it's A D B C. How's mm -hmm. it going? You have backwards pawns every game, Scottish Demon Goat. I believe it. Let's see. Let's see. All right, we'll try this again. I still can't remember what I'm supposed to do. Hey, <laughs> you got it. Yeah, I can't remember. <laughs> All right, we're going to go here. Thanks, ADBC. That's like ACDC. Is that that's what it's like? Can I do that? Yeah, I'm, I'm a fan. Of, we're fans of Zep on this stream. Love sure. Zep. We love Mighty Zep. Hey, it's Thaddeus. How's it going? And Boris. And GM Benjamin Feingold mm -hmm. from Inside the Chess Club. The Jam. chat is coming from inside the chess club. <laughs> <laughs> oh, a lot of right here is endeavoring to learn and playing true. How's it going, Bishop Takes? Good to see you all. Mm -hmm. This is a fine gold maneuver here. Mm -hmm. Oh, and Kangaroo, how's it going? How's all this then? Yeah, this is like how my dad would play with black. That's true. Knight f8 to g6, mainly, etc. Hey, it's The Rock Obama. How's it going, Mr. The Rock? Mm hmm. The Rock. Solid as a rock. That's Frosty. Hey, Frosty, how's it going? Plain true and Bishop takes. Mm -hmm. Oh, and smile with heart. How's it going? Smile with heart. Hey Thaddeus. I'm hopping Sinbad. mad at the Senate. Hopping mad at the Senate. Hmm. Yeah, the Senate is pretty crazy these days. But what are you gonna do? I oh, haven't been paying them any Jesus attention. Jesus ninety six. I know, what are you gonna do? It's the Senate. Mm. 
Dang it. Darn. I'm so tired. This doesn't bode well for me today. Ugh, there's nowhere good to put. Even I from the Netherlands know about MTG. <clears throat> about what? Marjorie. Oh. Yeah. Yeah, she's pretty crazy. She's so crazy, she gets paid to do nothing. Spectacularly crazy. She's really crazy, and it's spectacular. Mm. <laughs> <laughs> it's a nice maneuver. I like it. Hey, Jesus. Yeah, I haven't been paying attention to the Senate. So I don't know what they're doing. Bunch of... Um... How's it going, pie shop and KQLY style? Great use of emotes. Mm hmm. Hey, style. Something's in my eye. Hey, pie shop. Karen preparing for knife F5, but Scottish Demon Goat won't let her have it. Mm hmm. He's not having any knight F5 today, he says. Yeah. That's true. Oh man, I'm not gonna win this game. Got seven seconds left and I'm down a piece. <laughs> not looking good. Yeah. There's a pawn break. Good game. Alright. Tough but fair. Mm-hmm. The time got you. Alright, I gotta wake up. This is terrible. What are people doing? There was a popular Reddit post about Ben a few days ago. Only a few people insulted him. What was the topic endeavoring? <laughs> so yeah, I generally would recommend you not to play C4, but you can. Mm -hmm. But we talked about how one uh, benefit for white in this move order is that you haven't played C4 yet, so you could do that maneuver mm -hmm. later in the middle game. Okay. Because the knight's pretty good on c4. But it's still okay to do this. You're just in a, a, a closed Benoni structure now. Alright, so the plan for white uh, is to play either b4 or f4. b4 is usually easier to achieve because it doesn't weaken your king side. Okay. So some ways you can achieve that plan is to play like rook b1, a3. That's a good way to play b4. You can also do this maneuver knight e1 to d3, which controls both f4 and b4, conveniently. So that's a nice maneuver. But yeah, you got to do some uh, some b4 is your plan, or mm -hmm. f4, but usually b4. So b3 is probably not so great. I mean, your moves are okay, but they're, right, they're not really like a plan. This is actually kind of a tactically sensitive move, because... He's got this battery here, mm -hmm. so he could try. This doesn't work yet, but the point is to attack your bishop, and if you trade bishops, he plays knight takes, saving his knight. But you can play knight takes here, and if he tries to win back your piece, you have a fork at the end. So this isn't working for him yet, but I think it actually might work after rook b8. For example, here I think he could try this. Because now if we do the same variation, he's out of the fork. He still, it's a check, which might be annoying, but, you know, he took a pawn for it, so, you know, I, I, I'd like that. But I don't know, this is still like you have some weird compensation, I guess, for a pawn. Mm -hmm. But I don't like it generally to play bishop g5 if my opponent has that tactical idea, you know, with, with the bishop here. It sort of, this happens in a French, but with the white square bishops. And then there's a knight on c6, yeah. and the knight takes e5. Yeah. It's the same idea, but reversed. But basically, uh, you're only losing because you, you blunder tactically here. You know, your guy is he attacked yeah. and defended once, and then you let him just remove the defender. Mm -hmm. So it's just a tactical blunder. Like, for example, if you move your bishop back here. And this move I didn't think was very good, but he's trying to win a piece, obviously. Yeah. If you just move your bishop back or something, well, maybe I, I think black is probably a little bit better because he's ready to play b5 and, and you haven't really done anything. But you're not going to lose because of that. Uh, okay. Yeah, I just didn't see it. It was too late. 
Yeah, um, I haven't added a Discord yet, Player Unknown. But that is coming soon when I get time. What are the game invite requirements? Just three or five minute uh, rated or, or unrated. That's it. No yeah. increment. No increment, although I don't hate increment. Just to keep it simple. Yeah, Boris, I mean, White can definitely play C4 there like she did. Uh, it's just that um, you could take advantage of the move order by not playing C4 since C4 doesn't actually develop a piece. Mm -hmm. And like I said, the maneuver knight d2 to c4 is, is very common in that structure. So that, that might be something worth uh, worth doing. Love that pre-move there, by the way. <laughs> nice <laughs> yeah. pre-move. Yeah. I gotta wake up. I wish that Ben had gotten us some coffee. Yeah. I love my bag and everything, though. Ben I mean, is... that's better in the long term. <laughs> <laughs> ben has been giving me Valentine's Day presents. You know, every day for you know, days. Like foods that I don't need to eat ever. <laughs> but today was a nice bag. And my rating level C4 is way more popular, so E4 must be better. Yeah, I mean, you could play... As, people like to play C4 in that position if they um, are like C4 players usually. Like they play D4, C4 usually. Uh, then that makes sense. So you're giving black an extra option where black can play bishop E7 followed by bishop G5. Um, so white's giving black that option as opposed to if black plays knight f6 on move one. Black can't play bishop e7 to g5 because the knight on f6 blocks that uh, diagonal. So that's the, only, uh, that's the only benefit from black's point of view. Which that can be a benefit because the, the dark square bishop's so weak in that structure. But, uh, so yeah, that's something you can consider doing, Scottish Demon Goat, playing bishop e7 to g5. If, if you play one c5 move order. That's one reason, that's one reason why you would do it with black, is, is specifically for that maneuver. How's it going, Doric the Cat? Hey, Doric, how's it going? Your bullet rating is, uh, higher than your blitz rating. But you still find yourself behind on time in Blitz. Well, that's an unusual, uh, <laughs> unusual set of circumstances, I would say. But yeah, I usually find people are higher rated in the in the uh, categories that they care more about and play more often. So probably you just play more Bullet, I'm guessing. Um, I'm not sure, Pie Shop. We'll take a look after this game. We can see what the queue is. We'll see what the queue anon is. <laughs> <laughs> Free pawn. Big check. That's why Karen's the boss. She's always giving out checks. Pretty solid stuff. <clears throat> Bishop H6, pretty solid stuff. Karen's horsing around now. She must have been watching a lot of BoJack. Pretty good stuff, extra pawn, what else? Two bishops, what else? Even better. Well, not really, but you know. That is how the saying goes. I'm 1500 at bullet, I'm really bad at 1-0 for some reason. Well, you gotta have that, uh, you know, that confident swagger to be a, a strong bullet player. I mean, not really, but you know, maybe. Can't hurt. Boris putting on the pressure with a quick, aggressive move. Never play F6. I hope my dad's not watching this at this moment, you know. Mm hmm.
Good Boris keeping the tension. Keeping the tension. Pretty classy stuff by Boris there. I gotta say. Too much confidence is a problem too. Well, maybe that's it, Scottish Demon Goat. Be a little bit more humble, and and your your bullet rating will improve, perhaps. Go, Karen. Hope the night. Oh, makes lift. Pretty smart stuff. He saw the issue. Who is better at chess? You didn't give people to compare who is better at chess. So I'm not sure. Can't be humble, I'm too awesome. I hate it when that happens. When you're just so good that like you can't you have to be arrogant. I've been there, you know. Good game. That was a tough game. Mm -hmm. Seems like you definitely had the advantage at some point, but he started getting some pressure on you. And it was difficult to deal with in a blitz game. Mm -hmm. Pickled Bill says, who is better at chess? Right. I asked him to clarify, you know, give me a couple people to compare. <laughs> All right. I mean, best or yes? <laughs> Bishop E2 is a pretty weird move. Yeah, GG Boris. Most people play F4 here, but also Knight F3 is a possibility. Well, obviously he's the teacher. He's obviously better. <laughs> That's true. This was good. But welcome, Pickled Bill. Now you got two bishops. And then, yeah, just castle. I like it. Now... What's the plan here? Queen b6, you just found a double attack. This is where you clipped the pawn. That was good. Mm -hmm. That was complicated, but good. Yeah, because I was looking at the knight, you know, make sure knight here. and four weren't going to, yeah. Yep. All right, I was actually a little concerned, even though you could do this. You still, your queen's attacked and your bishop is loose. I was thinking I could go queen e3. Yeah, maybe... that does seem like the only move. Uh-huh. But I, I did look at all of that. I wasn't completely sure. <laughs> yeah, maybe this, for example. Yeah. But, okay, this is all right, you know. Um, I might consider the move f5 here. That seems like a really, uh, really interesting move to me. Because, mm -hmm. uh, obviously, it attacks the queen. And in the case of on Passan, which I don't think is a good move, we'll play knight takes, defending our pawn and with the tempo. And now he's not really going to attack us because we opened it up. It's going to be harder for him to attack us. But he can play positionally against the e5 square. Even so, it'll take him a couple moves. He wants to castle, play rook e1, and move his bishop. So, yeah. Oh, you haven't played five minutes before? Oh. <laughs> well, I don't think Dang. I have any settings. That's tough. Unless that's a chess.com limitation because I don't think I have any against playing anybody for any reason yeah but this might not be the best move you could just go back for example yeah and then uh your e-pawns backwards which we'll learn about today when we you know mm -hmm. the john nunn stuff so anyways you did this and took i mean because here i thought you were still doing well so we shouldn't need to improve that was good all right so here even this should be good Mm -hmm. He traded queens. And f6 was correct. Even could have played it a move earlier. Yeah, I just didn't see that I was getting my bishop trapped. Right. And we were both getting a little bit lower. Yeah, I usually stream Saturday and Sunday's PDX Jack. Yeah, rook g1 is a good move. That was a really good move, keeping the tension. Because mm -hmm. you're still doing well here, but this was the blunder. Yeah, yeah. Because yeah. now he's threatening this bishop and that bishop. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I didn't see it. 
Um, why does Ben approve F6 in the French? Well, I mean, he know, when he says never play F6, that's obviously <laughs> overstatement. <laughs> Sometimes you have to. Yeah, never lose your bishop, right? <laughs> you know? Yeah. So, yeah, here uh, we have to play a better defense. Probably you can do this. Mm -hmm. Seems like a pretty safe move. And with the tempo here. If he takes, you could take either way. Like previously you had to take with the pawn. Yeah. But now you, you have the added option of taking with the rook, which you could still, you could, you know, eschew that option mm -hmm. and just take with the pawn anyway. But yeah, you should still be doing well here. You've got an extra pawn and two bishops and a, potentially a passed pawn. You know, maybe he won't take, but it's potentially a passed pawn. Oh, you got a job, PDX Jack. Oh, Aww. no. Jobs are for losers <laughs> and suckers. Jobs, no good. Mm -hmm. But anyways, yeah, the time, honestly, even this didn't lose you the game. The time is how you lost the game. I know. But it was a good game. Yeah, this, all this stuff was normal and smart. Oh, but, you got a little yeah. scared, a little back rank check. Yeah, yeah. No, that was smart. That defense there, the technique was good. Yeah. It's still tough to win that position with the knight, but it right. should be a win, yeah. All right, one, one or two more. Darn, I'm not doing very well today. How do I need to wake up? I need some caffeine. Yeah, this is a three minute, so you got to, and it's against Frosty. He's a speed know, demon. Frosty's hard. Yeah, you'd think somebody with a name like that would be a little slower, but. Uh -huh. Oh, I remember now, like, Nice. Me. Oh, he knew you would too. He pre moved it. <laughs> he didn't know I was going to remember. Well, I... he at least uh, prepared for that eventuality. Mm -hmm. <laughs> look at you learning the opening. Like a strong player might. Well, that was just one move. Now we'll, <laughs> we'll get more feedback on the follow up. <laughs> I remember the tempo part. That was good. I did. That was really good. Mm hmm. Finally. Finally. You work in a chocolate factory? That sounds like fun. Are you the, the taste tester? You know? <laughs> I really love dark chocolate. Uh, I've always been all about that dark chocolate. All about that face. Dark chocolate. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, dark chocolate's really good. I like it nice and bitter. <laughs> That's how I like it. Mm -hmm. Do you like dark chocolate as well? Um, I'm not as into it. I do like it, um, but not as much. Well, I don't really think it's very good for you, but it does have antioxidants. Dark chocolate is dope, yes. See, the Rock Obama gets it. Mm -hmm. Better for you than milk chocolate. That is certainly true. That was a good move. Gotta I hand it to him. Stinking bishops. At least, you know, this is just an exchange like sacrifice. Yeah. All right, let's look. I'm going to have it. Nothing I can do. Oh, yeah. Uh, <clears throat> I heard you talking out there. My dad said that he showed some some new guys around the club. Just talking to them about it. They said they'll be back. That's nice. But what was that? I said that my dad uh, showed some new people around the club. Oh, when was that? Just now. I heard him oh. talking outside. Oh, okay. Yeah, I was actually kind of wondering what that was about. I was mm -hmm. like, who's he talking to? I thought maybe it was like Brad or something. Yeah. Dark chocolate's sometimes vegan. Are we raiding Ben later? Probably not. I don't think our stream will be that long. Mm -hmm. That would be a very long stream, stream indeed. Ooh, 
lots of spider parts in chocolate. Is that true? Maybe uh, I'll eat like a. Maybe I'll eat like a radioactive spider and become like Spider Man, but with chocolate somehow mixed in there. Something yeah. to think about. I haven't heard this one. What about spider parts? <laughs> According to formerly 5IT, there's lots of spider parts in chocolate. Well, that's disappointing to hear. <laughs> Kangaroo is from the land of chocolate. <laughs> that's true. Mm -hmm. Kosher dark chocolate is always vegan. Kosher vegan dark chocolate. I don't know. That's a lot of uh. It's a lot of adjectives. Yeah, this is a good day for slowness. Day for slowness. How's it going, Daniel? All good. I'm doing well, Daniel. Karen's also doing all right. Although she's having a slow chest day. Mm hmm. Not my best day. Good that game. is true. Yeah, Frosty played pretty quick that game. Mm -hmm. Hey, Squire. Hey, Daniel. Yeah, I don't know. Just really tired. Not playing well. Oh, there's Violet. Oh, yeah, a friend. She's not on the stream. I got to send Just her a, a message. Just a chess friend. And tell her, you know, if she shows herself on the stream, I'll play her. So you were right. This is the way to go. Now, the trick is to play an early C5. Okay. I don't know I how remember. early. Maybe here. Let's see. Yeah, C, C5. Let's see. I don't know any theory here. Like this. That makes sense. Mm. Then attack. Yeah, oh, it even avoids the trade here to get the bishop pair. But white lets you take it to get more development. I get it. Complicated stuff. I don't know. I kind of like white here. But <laughs> maybe it's okay. But yeah, anyways, the idea is to quickly attack the d-pawn. Because you got a half-open file to it. So a quick c5, knight c6 is, is definitely the way to go. Put maximum pressure on their center. The way you played it, you played knight c6, but you didn't get in c5. So he was like so solid with his space mm -hmm. advantage, you know, and that's why you were worse. Like around here, he's so solid, and he just has more space, and you're a little cramped, you know. You gotta sw get that guy out here, trade him. Yeah, it was cramped. That'd be way better. Why would a spider go there? I yeah, missed. I don't missed go there. Where he goes? <laughs> I heard something about the chocolate. All right, so he's got a really comfortable position here. Look at him. Mm -hmm. So this move is controversial, but maybe good because he has bishop b7 at the end. Right, like if he plays... Oh, okay. If he plays pawn takes, I mean, that's just good for white. You can't even move your knight. You have to go here, right? Mm -hmm. Then I can still do this and try to win the pawn, but my bishop might be trapped. So let's play like a4 first. I don't know. Maybe I'm not winning material. a4, you just take it. But even this kind of position is good for white. No, no, I lost my B pawn. That's not good. It's not good to lose your B pawn. Yeah, I don't know. I guess I would just play this position because your knight's bad. And I would just play normal with white. Like, I could just improve my queen, defend my B pawn, and then try to play some A4. Mm -hmm. But there's still work to do here. He took with the bishop, which probably let you off the hook a little bit. Even though white's still probably better. Like, if you just play C6, for example... Well, you're, you're passive, but, but you should be able to survive, I guess. Maybe knight d5's a move. But now you lost material, yeah. You did the best you could there. That was good. Yeah, I read somewhere, formerly 5IT, that we eat a certain, you know, pounds of insects a year. <laughs> By accident. Or on purpose. Yeah, some people. 
Right, probably I would try to keep the bishop pair and go here if possible. Because uh, it is a long-term advantage. But your bishop's still pretty good. I mean, it, you're hardly... Uh, like in a blitz game, it's hardly lost. Mm. But, but lost. Okay, so there's no way to exploit this somehow? <clears throat> like this? I don't know. Doesn't seem right. Because he's, he's pinned here and here. So you try to break him down. I like it. Yeah, I mean, your, your position's not even that bad. It's down in exchange, but you have comp. Mm -hmm. You know, this is he's got weak bonds. This is like a tactical idea. He's got no activity. I mean, he, I mean, he just has a normal amount of activity. He's got no, like, threats or anything serious. But yeah, the time got you, of course. Wait, go back. Oh, so yeah. the tactical idea it seems like um, to play e five. But um, and he's stopping that. But maybe can the queen can the queen just take um, take what are you hear? Uh yeah. Yeah, I said he's stopping that. Okay. The rooks could also take it. Right. Yeah, he's covering that. Mm -hmm. But he, he has to pay attention to that. And in the meantime, you can start targeting his pawns. Okay. So uh, what? With queen c5 hitting c3. Okay. Or queen a5 hitting them both. All right, but I couldn't. You're just saying that's an idea, but there's nothing I can really do because he's covering. Right. I got that yeah. list of move or He something. just has to, uh, you know, he has to keep an eye out for this and defend his pawns. Mm -hmm. So it's it's going to be kind of a laborious task. I mean, probably f3 hurt him, I guess, but still, it sh I think it should be a win. Even though he, you gave him some messed up pawns, which was nice mm -hmm. for you to do that. All right. Well, I'm thinking 80 grams of insects. Wait, what? <laughs> we can start the lesson now, I think. Let yeah. me see. What What was the... Why won't this ever scroll? I don't know. It drives me weird. crazy. I think it's the Mac, but maybe... Yeah. Macs are generally... Oh, 80 grams of insects. Okay, maybe I was wrong. Pounds, I guess it's a little ridiculous. <laughs> like a pound. What about like a British pound? <laughs> she used to check lettuce for bugs. And she found some. Picture you scrolling. <laughs> All right, yeah, this is about backwards pawns still, as the title of the stream would indicate. Mm -hmm. And we'll see black will have a backwards pawn on e6. And actually, you know, a bunch of potential weak pawns too. Okay, let's see, white to play. This is uh, Mickey, Slick Mickey, we call him. Against Stuart Conquest. I didn't know there were so many bugs in lettuce. Hey, April Coco. Are you going to go tonight? No. Oh, okay. You know, I know this, uh, I know this game, actually, Adams Against Conquest. The oh, opening, yeah? yeah, the opening was a Carol Con where Conquest played an early H6, and he got outplayed really nicely. And I remember the structure was like this. I did, yeah, that, that's crazy. That was from an Agard book that I that I saw that. So I saw two different parts of the same game in two different books. Mm -hmm. Crazy. <laughs> it is crazy. Hey, Bumbling Pot, sir. Yeah. I don't know. I tried to refresh it, and it's just not having it. Oh, that's all right. Yeah, you can keep going. I'll just do it while you talk. All right, this is from the British Championship 2010. Black's e6 pawn is a backward pawn. That is a pawn which has lagged behind friendly pawns on adjacent files. It cannot be defended by neighboring pawns, nor can it advance with the support of other pawns. The backwardness of such a pawn usually di disappears <clears throat> if the pawn can move forward. So a backward pawn is a particular weakness if, as here, the opponent is in firm control of the square in front of the pawn. Like how Mickey is. Yeah, that is cool. I like. I wish I could recall more games too. 
But Spencer's been playing for a very long time. That's true. Hey, Elijah. Um, a backwards pawn by itself is not usually fatal, and it is interesting to see how Adams maneuvers to increase his advantage. Rook e3. A backward pawn is most effectively blocked by a knight, so uh, and so white does not delay in putting the knight to e5. There it is. Rook f4, dubious. This allows white to increase his grip on e5. He should just get on with it and take queen f6, aiming for g5 and knight g6 to hit the rook. Um, this gives black better control, or better chances of contesting white's control of e5. If he can get his knight here, even put his rook behind, he can dream of playing e5 one day and equalizing the position. At least equalizing it. But he goes for rook f4 dubious. Now Mickey's just grinding on him here, look at this. You can hardly... Yeah, can hardly contest e5 at all. It's the fine gold gun, right? Yeah. Every white piece is focused on e5. Yay, thank you, Hiking Poet, for that sub. Um, white's plan is to force black to play h5. So he can gain access to g5 for the knight. Hey, this is Spencer. How's it going? You watched the Rite of Spring. And you were disappointed. I don't know what that is. I know that there's um, a symphony. I guess isn't there an orchestra work called the Rite of Spring. Is that a movie or something? Or a TV show? H5. Yes, Bla Stravinsky, yeah. Black could not avoid this since if he does not play h5 voluntarily, white will force it with knight g4. Forcing h5. Now there's a second backwards pawn on g6. So he's got two backward pawns. Hmm. All those pawns are very. Like checkers. Pretty much. <clears throat> yeah, his knights are doing a good job targeting them mm -hmm. and blocking them. With the immediate threat of knight e d3 targeting e6, and then he would keep maneuvering like this. <laughs> Just maneuver all the knights around on the dark squares. <laughs> yeah. Pretty funny stuff. Okay, so he goes queen c8 out of the way always retreat and repeat I love how he just keeps maneuvering the knights around here just to protect that extra in case he wants to move both knights doesn't want you to play rook f2 and he's also going to go here says none that is pretty nice queen c8 puts up more resistance but he gives this variation like this. Oh, the ballet version, yeah. Yeah, yeah, that makes sense. King G1. Don't rush in with knight takes e6 question mark. Because there's a rook takes f2 in the middle here to deflect from e6. And then it'll just be equal material. So play king g1 first and, and black loses the e pawn in any case. In that same variation, you won't be able to play rook f2 because I'll take your queen. It's not check anymore. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> so, queen c8 still ended up losing anyway. He played rook 7, f6, knight f, g5. And now the e pawn is doomed. So, you have this knight here again to protect f2. I still hear Ben talking up there. Yeah, maybe, I, I heard Brad come out for sure. Oh, Brad came out. I heard it for sure this time.
White is winning, but he still has some work to do. King g7, bishop f6 dubious. King g7 puts up more of a fight like this. Quadrupling on his own 7th rank. <laughs> <laughs> and instead he goes here. <laughs> Trying to swap him. He pulls a Karen, no queen trade. <laughs> Always repeat. Dubious. Missing an immediate win with queen e3. Threatening nothing. Queen d7. Okay, knight e6 is the idea. Now bishop, or queen h6 rather, is going to be the follow-up. So bishop g7 to stop that. But now knight c5. And white's queen will infiltrate into the position onto one of these three squares. You can't cover them all with your queen now. White doesn't con continue in the most efficient manner, but he still manages to win in the end. Knight h3, then queen e3. I can't stop yawning. <laughs> Not because you're boring. If he takes, then rook b8 is going to win. So he goes for queen c7. g5. Okay, so he tries to make it a little messy here. But he shuts all that down. And he forces the rook trade or the loss of a second pawn. So resigns. What's going on here, Smile with Heart? We're just going through the nine. Yeah, so um, Adams played a model game there. Uh, he had given his opponent this weakness earlier, as Agard had explained in a previous book. <laughs> and uh, actually, I don't know which book came out first, but anyways, that's how the early part of the game went. And then he's grinding on the e-pawn. But I like how patient he was. He builds nicely. Then he decides, okay, let's uh, try to provoke a weakness on the king side here by making the guy play h5. And now he hops his knight all around on these dark squares. Mm -hmm. Keeps poking and prodding until he gets a really nice setup here. And there's actually no way to stop the loss of the pawn. But yeah, he was very patient. He maneuvered around. He made a lot of cautious moves to stop his opponent from getting any counterplay. This is classic Adams. This is what he was known for. And then he's just going to win up a pawn in his own way, even though uh, Queen E3 at once was, was faster of a win. He was known for maneuvering a lot, or for what exactly? Well, he was a very strong positional player. A position, okay. Yeah, he'd maneuver it around a lot, and... Uh, collect upon like we saw here for example by outplaying his opponent by positional means and of course he had great technique because you know he's one of the best players in the world and you don't get there by not having great technique <laughs> you got to win positions when you're winning that's for sure yeah yeah just like you scottish team goat <laughs> you have all the you have all the subtleties of adams's play <laughs> definitely yeah all right let's look at the next game huh yeah let's keep going I wish you could have Starbucks delivered. <laughs> <laughs> you love Starbucks? I just need some caffeine. Thank you, A Becker755. I just kicked the camera too. I think it's fine though. For those 69 cent to do's. 69. Yeah, that is how he would say it. <laughs> <laughs> do you like Karpov? Karpov's pretty cool. I feel like. Were we talking about there? Was that Ben that Karpov's going to be in that tournament? Yeah, yeah, I remember. That seems unusual. I guess we're never going to get Karpov. That's sad. Mm -hmm. That's sad, true. The moment passed. No, we still got to try. Yeah, it, it, it's this weird thing, but okay. 
Okay, this is the right position. Yeah. You can even guess what opening it is. Okay. I will do it. Yeah, I'm not sure, Acres. Do you remember which tournament it is? No. I can't remember, but Ben was talking about it. Coming soon. All right, this is uh, Paco Vallejo against Gawain Jones mm -hmm. from oh. the European Team Championship 2007. What do you guys think? What opening was this? Mm -hmm. It's pretty, uh, pretty clear to me. I'm Let's basically a hundred percent sure. Mm. Not clear to me. <laughs> not sure. I'm not very good with figuring out what happened. Looks like. Yeah, you guys are getting close there. Sicilian's right. Sicilian dragon's even closer, but not quite full credit there. No, not a pure Scottish demon goat. Come on. <laughs> Don't even know if you're joking sometimes. Yeah, it was an accelerated dragon where white played like a Marazzi bind. Yeah, exactly, Jesus. You got it. It could have been a C4, C5 move order, but this is transposed to an accelerated dragon at least. So the accelerated dragon, then that's just a variant of, of Sicilian. Yeah, it's a Sicilian. Because I only knew yeah. this is the regular dragon, not the accelerated. Right, What's the, the difference between accelerated? The difference is that in the accelerated dragon, white can play c4. Okay. Which he has. Whereas in the regular dragon, you play knight f6, forcing them to play knight c3 before they play c4. So the regular dragon doesn't allow you to play a Marazzi bind structure. That's why it has to be an accelerated dragon. Mm, okay. All right, so he says a backwards pawn is not an especially serious weakness if the defender can control the square in front of the pawn to prevent it from being occupied by enemy pieces, just like we saw Adams do to, to conquest. Here, white has a space advantage, and to counter this, black decides to stake a claim in the center, even at the cost of a backward pawn. E5, X clam. Okay. There it is. E5, X clam. 50 years ago... Oh, wait, wait, wait. Let's continue a couple more moves here, then there. 50 years ago, such a position would have been condemned as very bad for black. But these days we know that the potential weakness of the backwards d-pawn is balanced by the inactivity of white's bishop. It's a bad bishop. Um, it is important that black is able to cover the d5 square and has a chance to activate his knight to d4, like that. The position is roughly equal, if only because it's hard to find a constructive plan for white. Yeah. Work a d1, attacking the backward spawn, but here he goes, knight c5. bishop d1, heading for c2. Once the e4 pawn is securely defended uh, by the bishop, white will be free to maneuver with his knight, which had previously been stuck to defensive duty. Uh, note that such a line as this, for example, Is never dangerous for black as this knight is better than bishop. This is classic good knight against bad bishop. Bishop stuck behind pawns on white squares and, and the knight's on a dark square, unassailable, mm -hmm. without an exchange sacrifice or a queen sacrifice. <laughs> yeah. Seems even less likely. So he plays bishop d1. He's going to go here. Yeah. a4. Getting some queen side space there. And this. So he's covering the dark squares with his knight now. Queen c7, dubious. A slip, since the queen was well placed on e7 and should not have been moved away. After rook a5, knight c5 also leads to equality. The position remains dead level, since f4, 
This, that's a critical move, F4, in this position. Maybe countered by rook e5. Yeah, black has good control of these squares, and if you're not able to break, then it's uh, it's going to be bad for white. He's going to have a weak e pawn and a back bad bishop. I mean, with the, both sides have a backwards pawn now, right? So it's not like white has a better structure. White just has a worse bishop here, and white space advantage is not very meaningful when when material has been reduced in, by so much. So rook a5 would have been a pretty cool maneuver, covering those dark squares. But he goes for uh, goes for queen c7 instead, and f4 x climb. By opening the position, white can try to convert the d6 pawn to a genuine weakness. Queen a5 dubious, the wrong reaction allowing white to gain more space on the king side and drive the knight away from e6, probably with that move, I'm guessing. He should have played e takes f, like that. Yeah, now you wish your queen was here to target the pawn, you know, like it was last time. So f4 was a well-timed pawn break by white, and I think uh, Gawain Jones underestimated that. This would have been the best variation, though. It looks risky. White cannot exploit the temporarily exposed black's black king. For example, e5 can be met by rook e8 x clan. It's just trying to stop mm -hmm. this and ignoring that, I guess. Okay, so it takes is the main line. Rook e2, because it's pinned. I'm getting counterplay here. Now, actually, white has to sort of trade queens here to bail out of that. With a draw by repetition, is the fork. Oh, I see. Yeah. You know, Gawain Jones played in our uh, May, our online yeah, tournament. Yeah. May, May. Yeah, I yeah, remember. I think it was. Yeah. I remember. Yeah, mm -hmm. Gawain Jones is pretty good. Mm -hmm. He famously uh, was up a piece against Magnus uh, in a dragon Sicilian. Not accelerated, but regular dragon. Mm -hmm. But then Magnus still won down a piece. Magnus oh, that's cool. Yeah, Magnus just hung a piece like in the early middle wow. game, and then just, won. Actually. Just like me and uh, Frosty. <laughs> yeah. Except for one thing. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah. Jones plays Queen A five here instead of E F, which was necessary, or at least better. Mm -hmm. And now F five. King F two X clam. The king will be well placed on E three, where it defends the E four pawn. Yeah, he is pretty safe there. No dark square bishops. Mm, that's true. No knight can check yet. You have to mm -hmm. go all the way over here. It's, that'll take a long time for that knight. And he's protecting the pawn. Yeah, at a glance, it seems it wouldn't be good, but it is good. Yeah, pretty solid. Mm. Pretty solid stuff. Uh, okay, so he says the queen, the queen swap has left black with serious problems defending his backward pawn. What is the rating of a good player, according to you guys? In your subjective opinion. I don't know. What's my rating? 2,200? 2,200. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you have to take a lot of things into consideration. But, yeah, so I don't know. I mean, if somebody's been playing for six months and they're 1,800, that's pretty good. <laughs> yeah. So you kind of have to look at those type things, too. This variation would also favor white. It is equal material. I mean, white's just active, right? And the rook on d6 is really good. And his mm -hmm. king is more active, too. But this is still a pretty messy position. I mean, black has a passed pawn. Mm -hmm. Hey, Panston. But he goes for gf instead. And knight c7. Knight c3, interesting. You'd probably expect him to win that free pawn, wouldn't you? But the g-pawn's also hanging, just like in the other variation. Mm -hmm. This is simple and strong, but the move played was also good. He played knight c3 instead of taking the d-pawn. Interesting move. King f8. 
He also gives knight c e8, which is a pretty passive move. c5 anyways wins the, the d-pawn. Because he can't even push, I'll take it. So he goes king f8. Here comes the counterplay. I mean, they, they were so wild. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Can you, can you guys hear Ben out there talking to one of our players? They're all the way in the front, too. Are they? <laughs> They're all the way in the front. <laughs> What's the best engines rating these days? Yeah, I don't I don't know. 3,700, I guess. I don't know, 3,600. Yeah, I don't know much don't about know. engines. I'm not really sure. I need to use one more. I know that so I can see when I do stuff wrong. <laughs> bishop h1. He also gives bishop c6, but that, that would run into b5 you can't hear him okay well maybe he's not as loud as we think and bishop e4 this is lost for black mm, that looks bad so he tries to stay on the diagonal here b5 x clam anyway threatening to trap the bishop with rook d1 giving the bishop no squares on the diagonal so black has to start jettisoning the pawns there's one F6 X clam. Always play F6. Resigns. So he's threatening simply this. But also that, which is even more simple. Let's see. How could we try to defend? I guess this would try to defend, wouldn't it? I tried at least. We could also even just take it. But no, then we'll go here. That's not really acceptable. You can't make a move to make bishop c6 not be winning next move. Why well, you throw in a check? But okay, it's not gonna help. <laughs> yeah, but anyways, even if he does stop immediate threats, the b pawn is strong. You know that's always the case. So I I would just push my b pawn here if I can't find a tactical win, which I really can't. But you know what's funny is I could play b6 here. Mm -hmm. And then I could try some knight d6 and bishop a4, and your rook can't cover both moves. But no, if I play knight, you could take it and then play rook e6. So yeah, I guess you would just have to win gradually with your pawn, as it were. Because I can't really find an immediate tactical win here. Mm. That was so nice. You got a nice chat. Yeah. A nice massage. <laughs> yeah. Bishop a4 first, right? Yeah, I could do it in the other. Oh, no, no, bishop a4 first because that didn't work because I you take this with check and then take the bishop. So yeah, I couldn't actually make that tactic work in in either move order. Mm. But alright, you want to go on to the next section? Yeah, I'm trying to to get some energy, but let's keep it going. I think I will get some coffee when I'm done here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. What about some kofifi? Yeah. You could get that. I've already committed to go to Chaplin, so I have to go for at least an hour. Dang, I hate when that happens. <laughs> right when you said that, Demon Goat had already said that. Hate when that happens. Really? <laughs> That's pretty funny. Goat minds think alike, I guess. All right, so this is uh, this section is called Pawn Islands. Fab says, "What was wrong with Knight G five? I don't remember. Hmm. That was too long ago. All right, we're gonna move on from it, but I'm sure it was a good question, Fabs. All right, yeah, this is Potkin against Kolotilin. Kolotilin, I don't know who that is. Russian Team Championship 2003. This will be again Pawn Islands." Mm -hmm. That's the type of thing I'd play with both sides. Yeah. All right, the opening has left black with an inferior pawn structure because his pawns are broken up into three islands as opposed to white's two. 
Whether this factor is significant depends on the exact details of the position. Here the pawn duo on c6, d6 is inflexible. Since playing c5 leaves a backwards d-pawn, um, and playing d5 will result in an isolated pawn after you take it. In compensation, black has two bishops what else, uh, but the light square bishop is hard to activate. So on balance, white is better. White would like to exchange dark square bishops as the g7 bishop is black's best piece, and it would get rid of the bishop pair as well. Yeah. Yeah, shallow and pedantic. <laughs> that is true. Rook e8. To meet bishop h6 with bishop h8. Classic maneuver. And knight, knight c8. Okay. To defend the pawn. Bishop e3, x clam. Hit that queen. To go to d4. Either exchanging bishops or forcing the concession f6, blocking the g7 bishop, which he did do. I like how he uh, like went here, back, and then up, and then back again. And then his knight also went here, back, and then back up to d4. Mm -hmm. Always repeat. Okay, bishop f7, bishop h6, rook b8. Hey, Tisker Tasker. Black decides to allow the bishop swap since his bishop is no longer active on g7, he means. White has a clear advantage since there's little black can do about white's pressure against the d6 pawn. Here comes the fine gold gun. Um, but the position is still far from a win. The rook lift to the third rank enables white to combine possible threats to the, to the king side. By rook h3, with the tripling of the major piece, or with the tripling of the major pieces, as I had already mm -hmm. indicated. 97. Black transfers his knight to g8, since otherwise uh, rook, the rook move could only be met by h5. Because rook h3, the idea is to play queen h6. Right, I saw that. So he's going to play knight g8 to prevent that, so he doesn't have to play h5. Oh, okay. He doesn't want to play h5. I was wondering. Yeah. So he goes rook h3, does play knight g8, and then back to g3, get that king back there. It's a solid improving move here, that's a nice move. And now he goes over here. Black has never managed to solve the problem posed by his pawn islands, and now faces steadily increasing pressure along the d-file. He's working him nicely here, he, he made these moves to make you move all your pieces back over here. And now he's like, okay, I didn't really care about that. I'm going here. Nice stuff. Get the, he gets the most out of the position that way. Potkin's pretty good. Potkin's pretty dang good. Queen b6 dubious. The d-pawn is doomed. Knight g4 x-clam. Winning the d-pawn while keeping a pair of knights on the board. White's knight is more active than black's, so this simplifies the win. Now you don't want to trade just because you're ahead material. Right, if, if you, you wouldn't trade white's knight for black's knight, that'd be crazy. Mm -hmm. Black's knight's a joke. You must think I'm a joke. So he does all like this. Yeah, they trade everything, kicks them away. few moves here with no comment. Knight h6. Knight h6. Put it in h. No, knight f5, knight f4. h4. Queen d5. And b5. He actually had a, a an immediate win. Check. And a queen c4. Ah, okay, I get it. So you, you just get the queen out of the trade. 
I was thinking the same thing, Scottish demon coat. All these tiny little improvements yeah. are nice. Yeah, that was nice. He slowly built the queen side. He's got two against one, made luft, mm -hmm. got his pieces active. Yeah, just small improving moves. I don't know why this move wins at once. It's it's sort of Zugzwang almost. Because if you move like the queen away from the rook, for example, then I'll go here winning. If you move your knight away from the pawn, here comes queen h4. If you move your king, here's this. But he could block with the rook. See, I don't really know the direct threat. You can't attack the knight like with this on Kassan. And this move looks pretty annoying. But couldn't I have even done that last turn? No, no, because then rook takes. No, no, because that hangs the queen. So yeah, you could do this. But anyways, maybe that's not that strong. I don't know, to me it doesn't seem like this is an immediate win. Like, I could play queen e7 or something random, right? Mm -hmm. Just a random move looks okay. Yeah. How's it going at at McMorphy? Mm -hmm. Hey, Atomic Morphy. At, oh, Atomic. <laughs> the K <laughs> threw me. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. How's it going? Okay, but he just plays b5. He's continuing, right? He's continuing as all. Well. Queen e7? He could have tried to trade him. He, in fact, none suggest this because it, it lasts longer, but white still wins. For example, like this. Mm -hmm. Hey, Benarici. Mainly, etc., he says. Queen e7. Oh, rook d7. Really good move. Really good stuff. So if you take it, he can... Oh, he can even trade queens first, but he, knight f8 is the point. Knight f8, queen takes, will win. Or if you play, for example, queen takes knight, he'll just trade queens and take your rook and be up the exchange. Nice stuff, rook d7. If black plays yeah. knight e3, white is a lot of moves out lose. Oh yeah, well, I guess because it attacks the queen. <laughs> is that why? Hey, Galodian, how's it going? That's true. See a nice game by Potkin. He uh, he had this opening where, like Nun said, it it's a better structure for the price of the bishop pair, but the guy's bishop pair never got anything going he never got his two bishops working in any kind of way and potkin kept uh, making these nice little maneuvers provoking and then going back and then eventually does get the trade and now he has a better structure for free and and it kept out playing the guy with nice little maneuvers but yeah potkin is, is a strong player as you can tell he beat some guy we never heard of but he's probably still pretty good <laughs> mm -hmm. definitely yeah, yeah, those are impressive. Well, let's see what time it is. We've only been streaming for about an hour. Right. It's 5.30-ish. Okay, we're still good. Before the queen was on? Keep going. Before when the queen was on B7, like here or here? No, no, it has to be here, yeah. Oh, like this. Interesting. Knight e3. Yeah, I don't understand. Hangs the knight. But anyways, good suggestion. <laughs> yeah, they could uh, they could hang their queen. It's true. We could uh, continue with the next example. Yeah, definitely. I think, think so, for sure. Yeah. This seem to go a little bit quicker than some do. Yeah. Too, as well. Plus, we're not in rush today. Although he's here. I don't think he would start early, though. Well, he's starting at 8, right? Yeah. So he's not going to start that early. That's what I'm saying, yeah. He's not going to start at 6 or nothing? No, because he's on a chest TV unless it got moved. Right. And I don't know about it. All right, here's uh, Van der Steren against Gleck from Bundesliga 94 to 95. A little English action here. They transpose to uh, King's Indian. 
White chooses this move order to avoid the Grunfeld. And he buys E takes D. Which is actually pretty popular. Although not at the time of this game. Yeah, usually it's, it's C6 nowadays in this uh, in mm -hmm. this opening. He goes for Knight C6. F4, hitting the Knight. Bishop G4. Hmm. Interesting. Those are some tactical ideas here. Because the Queen's overloaded. White controls more space, so black uses tactical means to force exchanges, even at the cost of some pawn weaknesses. Hitting the queen, also hitting the queen, like that. Black now has three pawn islands to white's two, but middle games are a mixture of both static and dynamic factors. While white may be doing well from a purely static viewpoint, it's important to look at the peace activity on both sides. The, double, the, C, the doubled c6 pawn is actually quite useful as it covers d5. While the open b-file and long diagonal offer chances to attack b2. The c and e pawns are slightly weak, and indeed black already threatens knight takes e4, followed by queen e7, mm -hmm. winning yeah. a pawn. Yeah, thank you, Nar, for that sub. <laughs> Black's possibilities for active play more or less balance the slight defects in the, his pawn structure, and the position is roughly level. This is in sharp contrast to the previous example, in which Black was never able to develop any active peace play. Van der Steren goes bishop d2 dubious, avoiding the tactical threat that we had established. He could have played rook a e1, that's another way to defend the bishop and also just get the rook into the game. Uh, the obvious queen b8 dubious, queen b4, fails tactically after e5, hitting the pawn, which would defend this pawn. Mm. Instead of queen b8 to b4, knight d7 is approximately equal. Yeah, I mean, this bishop's really good. He has the best minor piece on the board, so that compensates for his structural defect. Bishop d2 dubious. This is why he played bishop d2. It got out of the way of this, and it defended his knight so he could play b3 without worrying about the dark square bishop. The queen b6 check. Knight takes e4 x clam. Black utilizes his piece activity to force the liquidation into a clearly level position. Queen d4 question mark is wrong. Knight takes e4 double question mark. Bishop e1 x clam costs black a piece. And you can't move your queen to defend the knight. So I'm just going to take your knight after you move your queen away from my rook. Uh, you could get two pieces for the queen though. Like this. I might prefer that. You know, I, I would definitely prefer that. To get two pieces for the queen. Mm -hmm. Rather than lose a whole piece. But, okay, obviously both are losing. Knight takes e4, x-clam. <clears throat> he plays this first, then queen d4, x-clam. Now you can't play, like, bishop e1 variation, because we did a different move order, and it didn't allow you to do that. That wouldn't make sense here, of course. Mm -hmm. Thank you, Molassides. Right? <laughs> yeah, Molassides. No, Nur, it was, uh, it was um, you know, it, it was like a, a King's Indian with, with knight c6, knight takes c6. <laughs> Scottish demon goes, that can't possibly be the case. <laughs> yeah, just a normal opening, sorry. Queen d4, x clam. Knight takes d6. So he desperados the piece. There's this move also, but d5 to collect the bishop or the knight, I guess. Like this, for example, this is the line that none gives. Also leads to equality, with black's active bishop balancing out the broken queenside structure. I mean, I would think generally black's just better. Uh, so the bishop's really good. But I guess, you know, white uh, is solid, you know, 
That's solid. It has a better structure. So what are you going to do? What are you going to do? So he takes here, Desperado. Listen to my computer. Right, it's mad. It's an angry computer. Can you see if maybe the um, malware bytes is kicking in? Just right click. Her taskbar? Yeah, task manager. Task manager, I mean, yeah, obviously, frankly. Oh, processes, here we go. Mm -hmm. oh, so no, it should be. Click on performance, or actually you can just click on, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Hmm. No. no it's, it's Google Chrome. Yeah, Google's getting crazy. Come on, Google. But what are you going to do? Yeah, let me see it for a second. All right. I think I just need a new computer. It's always doing this. Yeah, especially recently. It didn't used to be like that. It didn't used to be so noisy. Look, I don't even have anything up. I saw. That's all I have up. I see. <laughs> <laughs> okay, get rid of this. All right. I don't think I guess. I'll sit down. Hang on, sorry guys. Still a technical work. Oh wait, look, it went up to ninety four. <clears throat> well, C six was hanging atomic morphe, but so was the bishop on D two. So black's gonna have to. Uh, it's black's turn now. White can't take it because white just defended the bishop. And also the rook on a one was hanging. This is the first, uh, the first moment that if it was White's turn, White could take on c six. What is that? I don't know. I mean, he's using zero percent CPU. It was no. Oh, well, it no. was for a second. Yeah, that's just weird. I got you. All right, yeah, go ahead. All right. So I'm rook a d one. He goes queen e four. <coughs> Excuse me. And then here comes rook d e one question mark. Move the microphone. I'm so I'm so tired. Am I not loud enough? <laughs> I think he means away from the computer. Oh, away it. from it. White yeah. should play bishop c three. Like this. With a likely draw, even in this simplified position, Black's active rooks balance his slightly weaker pawns. I mean, rook activity is very important in a rook endgame because it's the only piece you have. So mm -hmm. you better true. make it pretty active. But yeah, rook on e2 makes a, a pretty nice impression. Hey, go ahead and shut the Twitch window to see if that helps. All right. Right when I said that, it got quieter. Right, it, it heard the threat. You know? I think I just need to get a new computer. It's always Want me to exit it. out? Yeah, just exit. Okay. All right, go ahead. Yeah. Mm -hmm. All right, so instead of trading in, into this endgame, where I guess I'd prefer black even. He goes for D E one question mark. And now C five X clam. Nice move by Gleck. Mm -hmm. Preparing to play Bishop D four. <clears throat> when white will not be in position to attack black's pawns due to the, the inactivity of his pieces. H3. Rook takes d6 double question mark loses at once. Here, threatening the bishop. And then here, threatening this and mate. So he secure and anyways winning the pawn back. So he secures the back rank, might as well, since he can't take the pawn anyway. But here comes bishop d4 looking good for black and that's active pieces right there mm -hmm. before question mark this only makes matters worse a4 which I guess just to get off of of this right so we can move our bishop king f8 bishop c3 yes this favors black but white still has drawing chances I mean, certainly it's a draw but but it's tough because this work is so passive and our rook is so active it's it's gonna be tough. <laughs> a little bit. The uh, bishop takes there. <laughs> yeah, I like your dust in the fan reference, and it's funny because I just and that emote's good too. Yeah, I like it. I just sang well, dust in the wind at karaoke for the first time. I guess it's actually an emoji, right? Uh, I think he's on mobile, and that's a an emoji. Oh uh, yeah, problem. it might be, maybe. Uh, all right. So, anyways, he could have done that, but he did this question mark, making matters worse. 
But he's like, oh, look at this. I'll get a pass pawn going, you know. As if. Am I right? Mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, A4 is meant by D5 X clam. Come on. Uh, if you do nothing, this move, I mean, it's going to win everything. You know, this is hanging as well. So B6. But we can just go back and win the pawn. We don't have to try to win this way. You just win the pawn in the game. You can't defend it because I'll take that. You could go here. You could go there. But then it's a... Is it king b5? Because b7. No, it'll be rook a2. Here, rook a2. Yeah, that's it. Hitting your bishop and winning the b pawn. Okay, but he played f5. D5 anyway, X clan. This is hopeless for white, says uh, says none. So he goes bishop f4. I like how he put his work behind the pass pawn, right? Pretty mm -hmm. smart stuff. And, he's, and he takes the pass pawn, even smarter. <laughs> Just give me that pass pawn. And resigns. This is a good plan. It's going to win a bishop. And mm -hmm. he has another C pawn. Just in case. He'll be up a whole bishop for nothing. So great game by Gleck there. He was just very active, right? The, the backwards pawn or, or the pawn islands didn't matter at all. Because Black's activity was always the most important factor. And he also used a lot of tactics to to get the position to work in his favor. Like when he plays knight e4 here, for example. Like this. This tactical idea to trade off some pieces. And play actively with the queen. Yeah, yeah I like your summaries. Yeah? Yeah. <laughs> I like that you go back there and summarize the key points. Help, because sometimes it's a little tenuous in my brain. <laughs> so it helps. Yeah. Did A4 not defend the B pawn? Two C pawns. Oh, you meant uh, instead of H4, why didn't he play A4? Yeah, he could have done that. I mean, it would have just been still pushing the pawn. But I think that he was concerned about this move, right? Yeah, this is why he played H4. He was concerned about G5. Now, you... The only square you can go to on this diagonal is c1, but then you, you lose the bishop immediately with rook b1. So basically, you'd have to move your bishop along this diagonal, but then I'll queen without you giving away your bishop for the queen. Or for the pawn, rather, whatever, however you want to look at it. So that's why he played h4 and, and didn't have time. But either way, it would have lost without much, much effort, actually. Yeah. It's tricky. <laughs> Well, all right. So maybe we, you you can play some games. I don't know. We did uh we did two whole sections now. Let's see. We're at one twenty three. Yeah, I think we could probably do that. Then we'll just have just. Hey, we've got a lot of uh, viewers. Did you notice that? Oh yeah, what happened? Almost a thousand. Yeah, we only maybe. need nine more. <laughs> <laughs> um. Yeah, I could play. I'm just wondering about the timing though, because we might have time to do another section, or what we could oh, do. Yeah is we could do a couple of puzzles. Oh, we could get some puzzles Let's do going. a couple of All puzzles. Right. All right, yeah, let's get All right, a so we're going to do going. a couple of puzzles, and then I wonder why we have so many viewers. Hello. Maybe we got on... Um, embedded. Embedded Oh, no, and we even got more viewers. Chess TV for a moment. That happens sometimes when somebody doesn't show up for their Chess TV slot. Yeah, we, we sneak in there. Mm-hmm. I could try to get on Chess TV, but then I have to come at, like, 4 in the morning. <laughs> yeah yeah there's some slots in let's see where were we I forgot already I don't know I didn't even know that you were keeping track yeah I think that yeah, we should be on this one so we were just finishing up the John Nunn lesson for today for all of you um, potential chess TV people and now we're just going to do a couple of puzzles and then I'm going to play some viewers and National Master Spencer Feingold will give 
analysis. Thank you for throwing in my title there. I had to get a name drop <laughs> for all the viewers so that you'll return. Because you're not going to return just to see me. I'm not very good. <laughs> oh, I'm embedded. All right. That's what I thought. But there's embedded and then there's chess TV. And uh, it can be one or the other or both. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I had to do a little name dropping. <laughs> I didn't see the Twitter thread, Southern Chris. All right, it's white to play. Yeah, this is the right position, pretty sure. Okay, white All right, to white play. to play. White I to drew play. an NM yesterday. Oh, you drew a picture Yay. of a national master? That's pretty nice. Mm -hmm. Did you give the picture to them? And I'm fine gold. Frankly, not terrible. <laughs> That's true. All right. So, let's see. We got some, uh, got some forcing moves here, huh? Mm I got, you know, one forcing move is, is really speaking to me, mostly. Yeah. Yeah. It is white to play. It is white to play. Hmm. I don't know. I can't really make it work, though. Hmm. Is it White's turn? It is White's turn. <laughs> yes. How did you get 2,000 viewers? Just lucky, I guess. <laughs> People heard about how great this stream is. <laughs> yes, yes. Word of mouth, mostly. <laughs> and, uh, <laughs> they came immediately. I don't know, it's a little tactic. What were you thinking? But then it seems like I lose. Oh, well, what if you say, what if you say, like, knight takes b6? Okay. I wasn't looking at that one. What's the point after uh, queen takes? Oh, then can't you go knight? Oh, no, that won't work. I thought I had a check. <laughs> Buenos no checks. <laughs> Yeah, we still have over 2,000. <laughs> yeah, I was looking at that as well. Knight G4. Let me see. I wasn't That's looking true, at that. Frosty, but Knight G4, I couldn't beat uh, Queen G7 or F7. G4. Yeah, Knight G4 is the discovered attack because the Queen on C8, C7 is, is loose. Mm -hmm. It's a loose Queen. And we got our Queens lined up. So the first thing that we should definitely look at are discovered attacks with the knight. Okay. Knight d7 doesn't make sense, though, because we can play rook takes d7 protecting our queen. So that's not going to work. But knight g4, the point is if they trade queens, we intermezzo knight takes f6 check. And after king g6, we trade back f takes g3, attacking the knight on h4. After which we'll retain an extra piece. But like I was saying, knight g4, queen g7 is what I wasn't sure about. You want to trade here when you're down material? No, you want to win material because it's a tactical puzzle. G4. It's a tactical puzzle. It's uh, white's down one pawn, but white can win material here. Knight g4, queen g7. We could trade and play queen c7 check, king h8. But the rook on d8 is defended by the queen on f6. So I, I couldn't really, I, mean, I could take like the queen side pawns, but I, you know, we're down a pawn. I didn't really think that was winning. 
No, no, right. Just like I said, Bonarici, it would be uh, it would be defending the queen on f six would be defending d eight. Right. Yeah, yeah. You guys are talking about queen c seven check, but but yeah, king h eight and it's defended on d eight. But I don't know. I still feel like it's knight g four. That's just how I feel. You know, you can't blame me for how I feel, right? Mm -hmm. Like maybe there's some g three, but he always says knight g six. How are you going to defend a five? Right. I mean, white could take both the queen side pawns certainly in that variation and be a pawn up and probably winning. You know, king h8, queen takes b6. Black can play some move, though, before queen takes a5. And then after queen takes... Like, for example, let's say knight g6, just for argument's sake. Queen takes a5, rook takes d4. will actually be equal pawns. So, I don't really think that's winning. Since it's not... Knight takes b6, queen takes b6. The bishop doesn't go anywhere. He has the queen do his dirty work for him. Yay, thank you, C.L. Smith, for that sub. Oh, oh, after queen c7, king h8, knight takes b6. Combining the two ideas. Now I'm understanding. Check, king h8, knight b6. Well, I guess I could play a passive move like queen f8. That'll defend my bishop, but that actually looks really good for white. I mean, we could even take the bishop and take on a5, and we are a pawn up. But yeah, I think knight takes b6 is the key response there. I could definitely see that working. Queen, king, h8, knight d6. What? Ah, hmm. oh, oh. knight d6. Knight d6. Threatening on c8 and threatening f7 fork. That is pretty nice. Knight d7, rook takes d7, Bonarici. I mentioned that, actually. Mm -hmm. Yeah, knight d7, rook takes d7. So yeah, I think that Frosty hit the nail on the head here. It's this, that, check. Now you can't block with the queen because it's hanging. You can't step your king up because this is, is almost mate. You have to give up your queen. Well, then you could win this, but that's not enough material. So I was going back here, but then this move threatens two things. Which will at least win the exchange. I don't know if king g8 is any different, though. King g8 avoids this fork. So maybe that's a better defense. I mean, it sure looks like it. Even still, this might be strong. But here I could defend passively, though. Yeah, I could just defend. But even here, we can like take all the stuff and be it's good for white. See, I'm still not 100,000% sure that this is the answer, but it does seem correct anyway. Why queen d7 instead of queen takes g3? Queen g7, you mean. Because if you play queen takes g3, it will intermezzo check. You'll attack our knight with your king, but after takes, we both have a knight hanging, and white will be a piece up, no matter how you slice it, like this, for example. It's a knight up. So that variation I thought was too easy. And queen g7 or f7 uh, were the defenses that I couldn't break. But yeah, I think that takes followed by... This must be the move. Even still, we can take the pawns or play knight d6 or knight b6. They all seem pretty good. You know, they all seem like pretty good moves. They, like, the knight moves force a passive response. Mm -hmm. Like this, for example. Which is unpleasant for black to lose more material and be passive. Something like this should just be a win. I got connected past pawns. Bishop's helping too. I move the queen. But I don't know. I mean, sometimes the answer to the puzzle is kind of like this, where it's it's not black resigns, right? But this is a win. 
But Black Widner is how I need to continue playing and then lose. That's all. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. But, right, I mean, Knight D6 is better if King H8, though. King H8 wasn't the best defense that I suggested because it walks into the fork after Knight D6. Well, let's see if the book is agreeing with us. Mm-hmm. Just find it in the answers here. You would never win this as Widener? Uh, with the two pawns? I think maybe, you know. <laughs> oh, maybe with black, yes. Mm -hmm. When you're totally losing, you don't have the uh, psychological pressure, right? Mm -hmm. Hey, the real Gre Ge uh, <laughs> Greco. Knight g4, x clam. f4 is his main defense, which we didn't talk about. Alternatively, queen f7, which is the same, because we'll take. Yeah, king g8. Knight takes b6. White should win. Yeah, just like we were saying. Has to, forcing the passive move and then we'll win the position that is winning. Or if queen takes g3, white wins a piece, as we explained. So f4 is the main defense, which we didn't consider. Yeah, I just didn't think about it. Yeah, me neither, but that's obviously a, a tricky move we should mm -hmm. have thought about. Well, yeah. You could also try king g7, but this allows knight h5 check. And then we can go here to defend our knight and our queen. There's still this move, discovered attack, right? With the bishop. But knight takes check. Luckily, he can't intermezzo this because our queen would be saved. He has to take our queen, but then we get his rook, yeah. And now we're going to be up the exchange after he takes our knight. Yeah. Although not even... Well, actually, no, that's not even true. If he takes with the bishop, we skewer and win the bishop. If he takes with the king, we go here. The only legal move is this, and then we can go here. Okay, yeah, so he's, he's holding here. I thought we could still win material. But, but anyways, we're up the exchange, no matter what. Mm -hmm. Okay, so we're not done here, though. King g6 is the main defense instead of king g7, knight h5, which is what we just looked at. Knight e8, x-clam, hitting the queen. Queen takes... Our queen's also hanging, don't forget. And he can't take here to save his queen and hit our queen because we'll take back with a check. And then we'll just move our queen away and be winning material. So he desperados his queen in this variation because our queen is hanging. But we can escape with a check and then take his queen next. This, uh, is, this is how the game proceeded and, and Black resigned. <laughs> tried to get all cute. Yeah, he tried to get all tricky, right? Uh -huh. But at, at the end, White had the last twist. That's right. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Yeah, 98 is x -clam. That's 91, though, uh, Nur. 91 in, in, in the Aronian Geary game. Yeah, anyone can remember that. Get it? Anyone? No. 91, anyone. Uh -huh. <laughs> yeah. All right. Yeah, escaping with check. Yeah, I love that. Definitely. Definitely. How about another puzzle? What do you yeah, think? let's do another puzzle. All right. These are fun. I, that, was, that one was hard, though. But, that one was tough. But, uh, but We had a lot of the right ideas, though. Um, but F4 is really where uh, we all missed that mm -hmm. one. we got to find the best defense better than that. <laughs> you like that bone reaching? I gotta wake up. I'm not gonna be able to go out. Yeah. Too sleepy? <laughs> well, I'm just tired. I had to get up so early. I got up at 7 today. That's crazy. Mm hmm. There is a 7? Mm hmm. Well, I mean, and I was out. But I wasn't really out that late. I, ben didn't. Ben barely beat me home. Mm -hmm. The Taco Taco Bell line slowed <laughs> slowed him down. <laughs> I hate when the Taco Bell line slows me down. So I was trying to get home, and he he did ultimately beat me. All right, this is black to play. 
No, no, we. I think we looked at this one though. We. I remember this one. We looked at this one. I remember it. Oh, we did. Yeah, yeah. I just went out of order in the book. We looked at this one already, so don't waste your precious brain cells on this. Oh, okay. Yeah, I remember it. No, I just. I guess I should have gone to bed earlier. I mean, I still went to bed around midnight, but then I got up at seven. I don't know. I was just tired. Yeah. Wasn't it asleep for me? I usually wake up around ten, <laughs> honestly. On a Saturday? Yeah. Or any day? Pretty much any day. I don't yeah. even I don't even remember the last time in life that I slept till ten. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah, I don't sleep till ten. You're, you're living a tough life. <laughs> I gotta say. <laughs> I gotta say. I mean, that just I don't even know if I could do it. Even if I'm out till, you know, whatever's, I can't imagine that's what I would do. I like to get up early. My whole life, even when I was um, a kid and on into high school, I always wanted to get up early and, and did. Can I see this for a second? Yeah. Somebody asked me a question, and I missed oh, it because that. of, uh, yeah, it scrolled. Mm. This is white supply. You're right that it doesn't scroll. Yeah, it had to play with it a little. Can you speak to the manager, please? Yeah, you're speaking to her. What's up? Spencer, do you do positional puzzles for training? No, I don't do that. <laughs> All right, so white supply. All right, white supply. I can't look at chat anymore. Hmm. I told Ron on the horse too, but he said it didn't matter. So we're just messing around. Yeah, on just the jamming. Patio, on the patio. Yeah. Hope you like jamming too. <laughs> I want to jam it with you. Mm. What do you do against the anti anti London? <laughs> you're gonna have to uh you're gonna have to give me some chess moves for me to know what you're talking about. Anti to the third London. <laughs> That's just the same as one anti London, isn't it? I mean, to me, this one looks a little straightforward. Uh, I don't know if Black has some fancy defense that I'm not uh, privy to. Hey, when I'm not privy to their defense, you know. Yeah, yeah, that's what I was thinking. Bonarici. And I think somebody else mentioned it earlier too, actually. That's a good variation, uh, Scottish Demon Goat. Only one illegal move is good. What do you think, Karen? Because there's something that really sticks out uh, like a sore thumb to me in this position. Oh, right, right. Endeavoring to learn. Yes, yes, that's right. I don't know. I was looking at the knight on F6. Yeah, it's an, an it's eternal pin. He can and never so, get out of it even, right? So if... um, Right. Mm -hmm. So how are you gonna, going to punish that? I was looking at that, so... Not really, Bonarici. I mean, the first thing I was looking at was knight G4, but then they could just take with the bishop. Yeah. So I wasn't sure. Um, 
That is true, but let's continue looking a little deeper. You can't attack the knight any other way. True. So that's the only way to exploit the pin. Mm -hmm. After bishop takes, h takes, white has a threat in that position. Okay, well, let me keep looking. What is white threatening let's after see. bishop takes g4, h takes g4? I don't really think so human that much. I think we can defend that pretty easily by just pushing past there. Oh, you could then, um, it seems small though. Look, you can, like, I mean, the A pawn's way. Well, we want to win the knight. Oh, oh, that's right, back to the knight, I got sidetracked. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Okay, so after that exchange, oh yeah, then you just, um, G5. Yeah, G5. Yeah, I forgot. <laughs> so how does black prevent G5? Uh, okay. They can... You know, I couldn't really find a way. I mean, they could play G5 themselves, G5, but yeah. then after we play FG, it's the same, same problem. Thing, yeah. yeah. So I couldn't really find, a, like, a tricky defense. Maybe M's will have a variation that is complicated we have to find. But that just seems like a straightforward win to me. Mm -hmm. You're worried you're missing the entire line? Well, we'll find out. Mm -hmm. Yeah, yeah. Let's see. Sometimes mm -hmm. the puzzles are a little easier than the previous one, though. Yeah, they don't agree with that. So it could be just that. Yeah, in fact, it is. He goes here, and this is something the human that much was concerned about, h3. But all we got to do is play g3. Mm -hmm. That's not a problem. And after this... Korchnoi with black resigned. This was Kara's Korchnoi from 1959. There's no defense to g5. Yeah, right. basically the only thing to this puzzle is noticing the eternal pin. Mm -hmm. He can't do anything. He needs two moves to get out. But there's just no way. He's not going to give him that time. Yeah, mm -hmm. tough stuff. Hey, Sandy Dog. Poor Korchnoi. Yeah, well, that's what he said. Poor Korchnoi. This is mm -hmm. the second time I said the thing that the guy said. <laughs> right? <laughs> Admit it. Yeah. Or right, maybe another one, because that one we got pretty quickly. Yeah, we can keep huh. going. Poor Korch, <laughs> Korchnoi. Korch the Torch, we call them. <laughs> Porchnoi. All right, let's try this next yeah, one. Yeah, we're going to do another one, Bonarici. Yeah, one last one. Goldilocks. All right, it won't be too easy or too tough. Mm -hmm. It'll be just right. We we got embedded, GM Benjamin Feingold. Yeah. Briefly. So that was good. Yeah, we're doing well, Sandy. Hope you are too. Hope you like jamming too. I was thinking that too because of the rhythm of the way I said it. I hate when it messes me up like that. Mm -hmm. Hey, John, John. <laughs> All right, black to play. Let me just make sure I set it up right. But it looks correct to me. Yeah, Ben, ben gave me all these um, Valentine's Day presents. I can't wait to try out my new bag. I think I solved this one. Already? What? Yeah, I just don't really quick. Black to play. I'm fierce. What can I say? Alright. No, it's definitely not uh, Bonarici. This one is, uh, I'm like, you know, over, almost, almost over 100% sure. As close to over 100% as you can get. That it's not going to be a 10 move <laughs> solution. I have uh, dyed my beard before, so don't think I won't do it, John John. <laughs> don't think I won't do it. Yeah. I figured I was correct. I'm technically correct. The best kind.
Oh, that was dumb. <laughs> Well, what do you think? Uh, what are you thinking about here, Karen? Um, oh, I mean, it seems like you want to try to queen Blacks. I don't know. Well, Black's going towards us. Black's not queening the pawns right now. Right. You know, black's going this way. Right, so I, I'm not sure I was looking at G5 for a second. But... G5 check. How come that's not checkmate? Mm. And what would white play after G5? Um, let's say king e3. Correct, yes. <laughs> so all we got to do is stop him from going there. And we win. True. I would say it's easy as one, two, three, but you don't even need to get to three. It's as easy as one, two. That's even easier than the song. Hmm. So control e3 and prevent king e3. But don't give away any other squares. That's the key point. Yeah. Um, let's see, maybe you could go bishop g5. That would give away another square, though. Okay. What square would white be allowed? Um. Oh yeah. Then it can go to g three. Right. Right. Okay. Um. Well, I mean, you could prevent by knight f one, but then you're giving up. You know, the white squares. Yeah. yeah f3. Exactly. All right. So that's not. No, you need to keep your knight there. How else can your bishop control e three? Um. So I guess you could go bishop f2. Right. And then how is he going to stop g5 mate? Um. Exactly. Bishop f2, you could pre-move g5 mate next move. He can't stop you. Um. Unstoppable mate. Oh yeah, he's trapped in there. Well, that's really hard to see. Yeah, it's a mating net. That's what it is. Just <laughs> that's pretty a cool, net. though. Darn, I couldn't see that. That's pretty cool, though. I couldn't even see that he was trapped in there. Well, right. So here's how I solved it so quickly. Yeah. I thought, okay, G5 check. That's the first move I'm going to look at. Yeah, I was looking at that first. Then I was like, oh, he can only go here. Right. And then I was like, okay, I'll go here. Because <laughs> that's the opposite. Yeah. Because I knew the night moves wouldn't be right because then I'm moving away from here. And Bishop G5, I saw that. And so then I thought bishop f2, okay, forced mate. Mm -hmm. It's actually the first move I looked at after g5, luckily for me. You were thinking, the first move you saw was bishop f2 because you were <clears throat> thinking of the pawns going the wrong way. <laughs> oh, right, he thought that white was queening, so bishop f2 prevents queen. Oh, I actually thought that too. Pretty funny. I know I thought that too when I first glanced mm -hmm. at it, and I'm like, oh, wait. <laughs> I always have to orient it. Um, this when was the game, uh, a game some guy against Bronstein. Mm. Bronstein played bishop f2, 1960. He beat some guy. Yeah. Yeah, I agree with you, Ben Rishi. That should have been a big hint. That if there was only one, mm -hmm. one move that, that you were just going to trap him in there and mate him. Yeah. That's true, PDX Jack. 
All right, so we we did a, a few puzzles now. Maybe us uh, some some games. With yeah, viewers. yeah, we could do that. Let me All see. Right. Yeah, that sounds good. We can go a little bit longer today. Why not? But um, sure, why not? Yeah, because you don't have any lessons or anything. That's so correct. if you guys want to send um a challenge, let me see if we've got oh, X any. out of the subboard too. Uh, oh, we have some already. Oh, several. Okay. All right. Well, and then you know I'll play some viewers. Spencer will give a critique, an analysis, etc. Is the Ben stream going up? Well, he deleted one of his streams. That's the one, yeah. So that one won't go up. I didn't actually see that stream. I must I think I was out. But he said that he um said some things that maybe he shouldn't have said. <laughs> so yeah. decided to delete it. We've all been there, obviously. So that's what happened. Yeah, that won't go up. Yeah. I missed the stream too, so I won't ever know. Tasker trying to play pin the tail on the donkey. Mm -hmm. I get it. <laughs> you missed a pin, right? <laughs> Was it the wishbones joke? <laughs> yeah, from the calendar of jokes. <laughs> <laughs> That's a good joke, the suspenser. <laughs> um, well, pretty solid play. Mm -hmm. You don't remember anything out of line? <laughs> Tasker, you got to speed it up here, buddy. Yeah. And you're going to spend a minute on 10 moves? Come on. It's the opening. Just get those pieces in there. Yeah, I don't know. He told me, but I don't want to repeat it. <laughs> <laughs> what it was. I guess I could say it maybe out of context. And it would be okay. But, um, always repeat that's true random moves <laughs> <laughs> oh you hate the calendar jokes I bought that form I didn't know he was going to read it on the stream <laughs> <laughs> I, <laughs> yeah Scottish Jesus, but that must have been it I can try to, get, to hide the calendar I'm, <laughs> yeah. pretty, I'm pretty sure it's, it has something to do with Genocide. Yeah. Yeah, that'll uh, that'll do it. But um mm -hmm. Darn, I hate him. I wish that guy would just move. I just can't believe how slowly you guys are playing. Okay, what's well, a five minute? Oh right? yeah, that's it's okay. just still painfully slow right. stuff. Okay. It's like watching a, a tortoise play a sloth with a snail as the arbiter. Mm hmm That's what it's kind of like. Yeah, all right. I can believe it, yes. Yeah, let's get something going. A little asymmetrical structure. Mm -hmm. Who doesn't like a good asymmetrical structure? Um. Spencer needs a joke book too. How dare you? I would never read a book. You Ruth Bader believe it. R.I.P. Mm-hmm. Let's see. Not none has to improve on his jokes. Yeah, that's true. None is a pretty dry dude, you know. He's not often telling a lot of jokes, I suppose. 
But maybe he'll change his ways. None. Yeah. One time I asked him how many jokes he's ever told, and he said none. Yeah. But then it went to one after that, you know, because that was a joke. Or actually, no, it wasn't a joke if he hadn't told a joke, so it was still not a joke. So it was complicated. He explained it to me. You guys... Um... <laughs> yeah? What about us guys? <laughs> I don't really like my qu queen doesn't really have anyone. Good to go. Let me go back over here. What was Nun's favorite opening? Nun? I don't know. Is that a joke? Probably the Night Orb. <laughs> really. <laughs> Nun's book's already 400 pages. No room for jokes. Yes. Oh, I am a fan of anti comedy. That's true. That's why I like, uh, you know, Tim and Eric and stuff like that. Oh, your opponent's getting crazy right now. I'm the pressure tank with the book. But now you learned about backwards pawns, so you'll be fine. <laughs> Are we I'm almost sorry. done with the book? I wouldn't bet on it. I would not bet on that. <clears throat> How's it going, Jay Wolfent? Yeah, Nun did play a lot of tactical openings. He liked to play the Benoni, much like myself. That's a pretty good move, huh? Mm -hmm. And he played a lot of King's Indian. Like, a lot of King's Indian. He also, uh... Yeah, I played a lot of Sicilian, of course. Uh, with, with black and, and white, too. He played one E4, mostly. Yeah, let me see. I maybe I can check to see what page we're on. Let me just give mm -hmm. a little, little look. See here. Let's see about it. No, no, no. I don't want that. Oh, in the bed. Oh, here we go. Here we go. We're on page five hundred nine out of six ninety seven. Seventy three percent of the way done. Pretty cool. Seventy three percent. It makes it seem like it will end eventually. It seems like it won't, but mm -hmm. <laughs> the book makes it, it implies that it will. So we'll see who's right. This is terrible. All back in the corner. He didn't really play the Dutch. <clears throat> I don't think that none played the Dutch much, much Dutch. That wasn't true, PDX Jack. That would have lost your queen because of Rook F8. Tactic. Gotta watch out for those tactics, buddy. Yeah, that's, yeah then there's the addendum, right? Oh, no. <laughs> Not the anything but the addendum. Always Fianchetto the Queen. I like to Fianchetto my Rook because it can't move diagonally. So it's just, you know, totally useless to, <laughs> to Fianchetto it. This is the worst thing that I've ever endured. <laughs> this? <laughs> this is terrible. It's not the worst thing I've ever endured. Yeah, it's like not even clear who's better uh, here. <laughs> it's just terrible. If this is the uh, worst thing you've endured, I wish I had your life, <laughs> your chess life here. Because uh, this is not that bad at all. Terrible. I love being kettled rooks, yes. Masterpiece of this position for Karen is so dangerous. Yeah, it's just terrible. Yeah, I don't really see a problem, but you know. On Passat? More like on croissant. One croissant. Oh shit, I'm missing their queen too. <laughs> Is it still the worst thing that ever I happened? Hey, what happened? <laughs> <laughs> uh, I mean.
Good game. It was it was close, but then it just kind of fell apart. He didn't have I a guess, lot of time. Yeah, we were both low. I didn't even notice the time. I could have lost on time. I didn't even pay attention. <laughs> I forgot. I didn't even know I did. That was terrible. You guys played the opening pretty well. Knight c3 is not the best way to go, Tasker, because you block your c-pawn. GG, Tasker. So you don't necessarily want to block your c-pawn so early. At least get out your bishop and castle first, you know, then decide what to do with your queen's knight. Okay, these moves are all kind of okay. Yeah, I mean, I, I would be trying to play this probably, break it down. I mean, b4 is just bad. You know, weakens the queen's side with not much benefit. I mean, for example, this square is weak. You can try to hop in there. But anyways, you can just sort of do nothing, too. That's okay as well. Okay, this is double edge. This might be bad for you because bishop g3 was really strong. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was. <laughs> now he should go here. Yeah. But you're okay here. You can just move your knight to the f file. Maybe this one's safer. And then king takes. And he doesn't really have anything he could do to your king. Your knight's pretty good, and your bishop, his knight can't help. It's a dark score bishop. So you're fine here. Yeah, you're all right. Mm. Just all right. So yeah, it wasn't so bad. I mean, if you don't want to do all that, you could play bishop d6 here to try to maximize pressure on the knight. That might be an interesting way to play But he didn't play e6, so now you're you're just very happy. Your position's solid, and it's mm -hmm. uh, and it's all right. But yeah, and you didn't really have a plan, right? Mm -mm. But a5 would be the the way to change the position, mm. especially with queen on b6, because uh, you know you put extra pressure there. Yeah, a5 is the way to go. And they, when they're playing b4 for no reason, might as well bust them up there. Right, I would take with the queen or the rook before the pawn. You know. Yeah, I know. I'd say that's dumb. Now, this was good because now you're winning. He blundered it. That was a blunder by him. Now, here you have to move your queen where his rook can't attack you. So, it's this square. No, but then the knight can attack you. I wanted to go here, but then there's this. But then... No, yeah. Yeah. So maybe this saves him, huh? Because if you go to the F file, he goes here. Like, like that's what happened in the game. Mm -hmm. I thought you could go here, but then there's this. Then he saves his knight. So H5 was double X climb. It was the only way to save the queen. Or to save the, the, the fork. So that was nice that he did that. That was mm -hmm. a good play. Yeah, I thought it was. Now he's even better, I hey, guess. Second. What's that? Um, yeah, and then I'll pay you. I'll pay it back. Okay. Um, okay. Thanks, sweetie. So you played this to activate your queen, I guess. Probably you could have taken. Maybe you were afraid of something. Um, yeah. <laughs> also, somebody in chat said that there is a, a free pawn hanging uh, on h5, but it never was. Like here. Mm -hmm. They wanted this, but rook f8, this is what I was saying during the game. Rook f8 would have won the queen. So she went back. But then didn't take. I thought that's what he was going to go, what he did do, which was right. rook g3. So I was a little bit worried about that. Oh, yeah, then you shouldn't play g6, right? g6 opens up the, the g file. Mm. But, okay, he's putting some pressure here. But, yeah, this is okay for you. I mean, you're not down material. You're defending it fine. This is kind of scary, but he can't really do it now, can he? He can't really do anything about it now, especially because his knight's hanging. And, yeah, now you've just regained control, and, and you're fine. Right here, he hung his queen. Not only to the knight, but even the queen. Oh, yeah. <laughs> then you took it. Now, here we have forced mate. Let's look at this one. This is puzzle rush right here. This. Mm -hmm. And then that. 
Oh, yeah. And mate with either rook. Classic puzzle rush stuff there. Mm -hmm. um, Your king is on g3. Hey, Danny. That's where it belongs. <laughs> and he won on time and on the board and made it him. Money from the register. I know Archer's very self sufficient. He gets to walk down and get his own food. <laughs> Hey, Rick Abrak, how's it going? Rick G4 instead of Queen E2. I'm defending the knight with the tempo. Yeah, she could just move her queen away anywhere safe. Seems okay. Yeah, but okay, maybe that's better. But of all the moves to criticize, that's <laughs> Queen E2 is okay. Good game. Mm -hmm. That was a good game. That was fun. All right, should I do another one? I guess I could. If you want. Yeah, That's let's do one you. more. You're the boss. We'll just do another one. And then we'll see. Oh, you sent me a text, but I was busy reading. Uh, or, I mean, you know, analyzing, so I couldn't read it. Oh, it's pretty funny. What? It's like snowman watching snowman, can't, like Zoom, Zoom meeting with snowman, I guess. Pretty funny. Ooh, Karen likes facing f4. Is that true? Yeah, it reminds her of the game she won in like seven moves against a high rated Oh, player. yeah, yeah. He wasn't high rated. Yeah, he's much higher rated. Do you want Jim? Yeah. <laughs> Got him. Okay, maybe. Roasted yeah. both people. <laughs> a double roast. You haven't moved things from that to that yet. <laughs> Not in the time that she's been streaming. Right, ridiculous. That is true. Yeah, when I watch on my phone, I can never see the times of the players or who she's playing. But I can see. Yeah, the it's position. too small. I can see the position now. Yeah. Right. So that's pretty good. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's pretty easy to see on the computer. Yes. Get my soprano shot in. Is bird a word? It's actually the word, right. not a word. Yay, lots of viewers. Yeah, they love our great chess analysis. Mm -hmm. E4. Best by test. Mm -hmm. Go, Ben. Go, our bric a brac. Yeah, that was almost B6, Scottish Demon Goat. You're right. Good to see you too, our bric a brac. They look pretty similar. The bags? Yeah, look. No, I, I thought so when I, uh, yeah, when yeah. you when you opened them, I was them trying to get one it. that she could, you know, that was similar. As long as she keeps rolling, 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 rolling. Mm hmm. The great Ben standing behind you. Will there be a Ben attack? Hmm. Rawr. <laughs> what? What are you doing? It's a Ben attack. Come on. I'm trying to play some chess here. should notice for a while. I did notice. I was hoping. Come on. Come on. I'm going to have to end the stream. I don't. Bens are generally friendly unless provoked. <laughs> um, I'm trying to train her like Botvinnik trained and blow smoke in his face and stuff. That is how it, he did it. Mm -hmm. Yay! An aggressive all, move. Because of all the stuff I did, she played that. You know, she's in a violent, aggressive mood. That was an aggressive mood. And mm -hmm. look at how much space she has. Mm -hmm. The final frontier. None of them's not going out like no punk, though. I get it. Mm How's -hmm. it going, Ivysaur? Rar is what Ivysaur might say. Well, usually he just says his name, I guess. Ask Ben, please, what he said on the stream. 
Come on, I sit in ho. Is it in is it in ho? <laughs> Yay. Oh, 300 bits from is it in ho. Mm-hmm. What he said on the stream? He said never play F3. Right. You mean the reason he deleted his stream? Frankly, obviously. Mm -hmm. Look at a tactical trick. Yeah. I hate when my opponents do that to me. Me too. All right, double it up. Like double mint gum. <laughs> that is a distinct possibility. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Dang. Ben said F3 was a great move and had to delete the advice. Or the, the evidence. <laughs> yes, had to delete that evidence. He can never, uh, he would never live it down in that case. Oh. Was that the correct thing to do, Nir? I don't think so. I don't think so. Go Karen, says Sandy Dog Doggo. Dog go. Go Sandy. We need from SpongeBob? Oh, that's Sandy. Well, you're winning now, but you gotta speed it up. Alright. If it's free, it's for me. That's what you like to see, some confident capturing. Within the week, the men in black will erase our minds. How do you know they haven't already done that, the suspenser? Nur likes to blunder when he starts winning. I don't think he likes to do that, but it sure seems like that happens. Here comes the fork. Nur, the psychological pressure is getting to him because you've got the knight, and he loves knights. Mm -hmm. So this is why he's uh, he's blundering. Is that, is that the knight that goes Nur? Yeah. Good I move. <laughs> Good move. Oh, hey, listen, I was just making sure there's no smother main. Now, come on. I don't see things quickly. Oh, wait, let me get another. I can get something else. Good. That night was worth a thousand rooks. <laughs> You've got a lot of counterplay. Mm. I can is, almost is, find is, a threat. Is he giving a simul and playing other people? Mm. <laughs> yeah. Check out those double Ds. Yeah, the ludicrous fills cups like double Ds. That's what he's known for. Nurse said, just give me the night. <laughs> Good advice, Nair. A collinear move. Go, Spencer. Yes, I'm doing my best. Man, he's all Good over defense. Me. I mean, how's it going, Darf? Good to see you again. It's been a while. It's been a while since I saw Darf again.
Let's see if she's got the skills to pay the bills. Probably not. Let's see. I just don't know how to do it in this amount of time. X Cloud, uh, guaranteeing the win. Darn. Good game. Yeah, you were definitely winning on that one. I know, I just didn't have enough time. A perfect game. <laughs> <laughs> oh no, you know, you should fly. I'm so slow. I knew I could win it, I just knew I couldn't in that time. <laughs> Bishop G4 is a good move here to equalize. But Bishop F5 should as well, I guess. All right, I probably wouldn't be playing C5, personally. Yeah. But because you arrange your pawns on dark squares, that's, that's not the viable strategy when we both have dark square bishops. Okay. But it's still not too bad. I mean, you got more space and a better pawn structure. I was just trying to... Maybe you could Minimize even go here bishop. and play, play queen d4, queen d3 at some point. But he might kick you away. But okay, anyways, whatever. There was a mate in one at the end? Yeah, yeah, there was. But let's go through this first. All right. So here, uh, you've got a lot of options. Like, you could, for example, try to kick the knight. Mm -hmm. Then he'll probably go here... Because I guess he could trade and go here, though. He could trade and go here. Because if he kicks your knight, and you take, and he takes, then you have this. That looks good. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yeah, he could just trade it. And you can't really intermezzo because queen here attacks this. Maybe you could and try to take. But then your knight's trap there. No, I don't think this is good for black. Yeah, you would just take back, and he'd go here. Then you could at least take this, though. Mm -hmm. That's a freebie, and he doesn't have knight c6 anymore because we traded him off. Yeah. All right, if rook f3, there's knight a2, exactly. Exactly, uh, Scottish demon code. So yeah, I think knight d7 is probably the move. Uh, rook c8 is okay, but he just kicks you away. He didn't lose anything, and he should have lost something, as it turns out. All right, now this was complicated. He should take here, of course. Mm -hmm. Now you've got two things hanging. And then he's winning material. But you have really good compensation, even like this, for example. I don't know which way to take. Maybe queen. Probably here to protect his pawn. And then here to... You've got great compensation. Mm -hmm. I guess I even like black here, really. <laughs> I guess I even like black. So, anyways, it was all turning out okay for you. But he did this just dead lost. Then he hung everything. Well, all of his stuff's already hanging, so I don't really blame him. He's already got two things hanging. Mm -hmm. And he can't go here to defend them because your knight takes. Oh, yeah, then he missed the fork. Missed the baby. Missed the blind man. Now it's just a complete win. Mm -hmm. But this is the moment for a puzzle rush tactic. Black to play. Oh. Oh, just queen f1. Mate. I didn't right. see the back rank, mate. <laughs> yeah, you gotta always be on the lookout for those checks. Oh, darn. You were I like, know. what's my opponent gonna do? That's what you were thinking. Yeah, I was trying to not lose material because I knew I could win it, but I just didn't have the time. Darn. Why are you assuming I hung all those things? <laughs> you, you didn't hang 92. <laughs> that was on purpose. I find that hard to believe. <laughs> yeah, you did get compensation. <laughs> At, oh, at this point, <laughs> nerd typed in the chat, don't play mate in one. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. I thought you might play it, but then you just dropped it here, yeah. Yeah, darn. Then he had some vague threats, but obviously you're winning. Uh, but the time got you. No time. No time. Well, I think that um, you're, you're going to stream at eight. At least. Yeah, okay. Darn, I hate to end because so many. It's a good time changes. to end because there's surprise Thai food. Oh, there is. Oh, yay. That, that's like surprise <laughs> Indian it food. It is like that. It's much like that, actually. It's a place we've never gotten food before. Yeah. Thai Thai. Yay, this is all, this is still Valentine's Day. Yeah. Mm -hmm. well, let's find somebody to raid. Okay, definitely. Let me, 
It's there been several days of um, Valentine's Day. <laughs> it's like 12 days of Christmas. <laughs> oh, yeah, I have to do this one. Um, yeah. <laughs> Valentine's Let's Day. Let's see. Um, I hope All you guys enjoyed the stream today. I know I did. You know who I'd And we got extra people. You know who I'd raid. Um... Well, there are several... At the bottom, the, the second to last there. Yeah. You know that's what I would be doing. Yeah, okay, I agree with that. Okay, mm -hmm. this is our friend and fellow He's streamer. He's a cool guy, so go over to love his stream him. and is tell him we all said hi. Yes. Beam yes, of I light, like love OV. Bye, everyone. See you guys. See you next time. Take it easy. Bye. Love you guys.